This is Pastor Loren Livingston from the Central Church of God in Charlotte, North Carolina, delivering a sermon denouncing the intrusion of politics into the church and those who exploit religion for personal gain. Some of you bring politics into the church. You think that politics is spiritual stuff. Politics is of this world. You think it's your duty to be political about this, that, and the other. No, your duty is to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Don't be talking to me about my spiritual responsibility to vote. I don't have a spiritual responsibility to vote. I have a civic privilege. Don't be telling me that voting is spiritual. See, that's what happens when you don't read and pray. When you don't read and pray, you, you say, wow, there's a Bible out now that includes the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Isn't that wonderful? No. No, it's disgusting. It's blasphemous. It's a ploy. Are you kidding me? Some of you are so encouraged by that. Let me tell you something. The gospel is not an American gospel. It is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But pastor, I bought the Bible. Really? You're telling me that you're encouraged because someone took a government, U.S. Constitution, a document that says... We are of the people, by the people, and for the people, the people, the people, the people. And you have put it right beside the Word of God, which is eternal, unchanging, which says, of Him, by Him, through Him, to Him, from Him are all things. And you're going to put those together and be happy about it? God forbid. Now, you can get mad if you want to, but I'm going to tell you something. If you glory in that kind of thing, you don't have a prayer life. If you glory in that kind of mess, political mess, you do not know what the Word of God says. I'm going to rear back and tell you something. This is not my home. This world is not my home. I've been sent out just like the 70 were sent out. You've been put here and sent out just like the 70 were sent out. We've been put here as strangers and pilgrims, and we are passing through. I am just walking through. I'm just renting an apartment for a little while in this strange and foreign land. No, sir. My real citizenship is in heaven, from which we look for the Lord Jesus Christ. Recently, we witnessed Donald Trump using Easter, a sacred holiday, to promote $60 Bibles with the Constitution included. This is part of a deliberate effort to spread Christian nationalism and equate republicanism with Christianity. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents, yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this. God bless the USA Bible, and it's very important and very important to me. I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. Our yes, you heard it right. Donald Trump is actively promoting and endorsing these $60 Bibles himself. Essentially, he is implying that your current Bibles are inadequate because they lack his endorsement. It is disheartening to think that the Word of God is no longer sufficient unless it has been approved by Donald J. Trump, as if he holds the ultimate authority. This notion is sacrilegious and undermines the true deity we should worship. Let's not forget that Trump claims the Bible is his favorite book. However, 
His response to a simple question about it raises doubt. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want to get into it. No, no I, verse I, that means I a lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like? No, I don't want to do that. I mean, Old okay. Testament guy or New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible the whole Bible is an incredible I joke uh, very much so they always hold up the art of the deal I say my second favorite book of all time but uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special now imagine if Nancy Pelosi or AOC made similar claims expressing their love for Christianity but failing to quote a single Bible verse would you believe them it is important for us to recognize the manipulation and exploitation of religion for personal and political gain as a church we must stand firm against such practices and remain true to the teachings of Christ.